Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Project Eris week number two. We got four big games coming up. I think I'm I think everybody's pretty excited for this one. My name is CDAPS. Joined with me is a lovely lady from across the pond. We've got Grace. How are you <laughs> Hello. doing? Hello. I'm really good. I do you know what? I'm so excited, genuinely. I'm so, so excited uh, for this evening. We've got some absolute bangers, some barn burners, as we like to say in the UK, uh, coming up for you guys. So yeah, I, I'm just honestly, I'm so excited for this. And I will say already off the bat, the third match of the day is definitely my personal one to watch. And I won't be casting that. We won't be casting that, but I'm just going to put that out there as a little precursor for everyone that is the one you want to be keeping a little bit of your eye on uh but we'll get to that later i mean yeah i think the, i think our first <laughs> game is also very good because disrupt mm. they came out they're a new newer team you know disrupt disrupt females i'm gonna say just disrupt gaming the, the disrupt females team they had stayed together for so long and then all of a sudden same team name completely different players they came out and put up a really good fight winning 7-5 last week against Whammon's team mm. and then you have sh who was the main core from sakuna who did very very well runners up in ccsws but they came out a little bit flat they had a yes. sub they can have their excuses mm. but now it's time to you know really bounce back yeah definitely i think there's always a bit of a i think it was yeah seven seven free against Goo Goo dolls which is a little bit it's not it's not a complete thrashing but it's like a light bruising so they'll definitely be wanting to kind of you know hoist and hoist themselves up again and try and take their revenge this evening and try and put their their pedal to the metal as they say so it's gonna be quite an interesting one definitely and I, i'm really curious to see how this is gonna go actually um again this, both these rosters have some players that i'm sure you all recognize and again this is gonna be a barn burner we're starting off with a good one yeah, I'm definitely excited. And going back to Goo Goo Dolls, the 7-3 victory last week, I think in my mind mm -hmm. that really kind of put Goo Goo Dolls head and shoulders above everybody else, and they're going to have to catch up. They are our second matchup, which we do get to cast. They'll be playing against Mirage. So that's another one. Starting off real strong, you said the third game. That's going to be amazing as well. And I think pretty much over the entire day, every game is going to be one you don't want to miss. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Um, and again, I think going into this as well, every single team that you're going to witness this evening they're all very very strong rosters full of you know it's kind of some of them are a bit mixy matchy some of them there's a lot of new faces but some of them are definitely faces that you all know very well from whether it's you know ccsw or you know other other women's leagues within the north american circuit so um again i i'm excited to see how the season's going to progress i'm excited to see how this evening in particular is going to go and i think you know, within a week or two, we're going to really start to see some of these stories develop with how the teams are doing, and that's going to get very, very exciting. Yeah, I mean, after all, all everything about Project Ares is just growth, and seeing rosters just take steps, steps, steps towards getting better is something that's really rewarding to watch. Even just yesterday, I was doing the community cast with with Crow, and we saw Tachanka's Angels, who struggled week one. Even though it was a very similar scoreline against Whammon's team, you can just see growth, and that's always mm. really impressive to see. So hopefully just that's, you know, a baseline that we're going to see every single team just be like, yes, we need to keep on going. We cannot stop or else we're going to get overtaken. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that growth because that's only within like a week. Exactly. So, that's yeah. why I'm saying it's so impressive because it's just a week. Mm. So, yeah, again, it's like what's going to happen in two weeks, three weeks, you know, especially like, again, the mid season of any tournament always gets super, super spicy. So um, I think, yeah, that's going to again, if people are growing within, you know, the first week and I think today as well, we're also going to see a lot of, you know, the similar themes kind of arising there Um that definitely, it, you know, I think this this is a really nice bit because I think week one. <clears throat> everyone can be a little bit nervous at times it's just kind of sod's law with it um and again i think even as a viewer you're kind of going in you're being like okay let's see what this is about then week two i think week two is usually when you get that massive trajectory of like excitement because the players have they've got all that like play day one nerves out of their system and they're like it's time for us to come here and show people what we're made of so certainly i think that this evening again it is going to be exciting and we are going to see a lot of growth here yeah i mean just just growth overall that's one thing you can always talk about but i mean we do have standings we can see exactly yes. where everybody <laughs> is tiered up because as much as we can talk about it, it's always a lot better to see it because seeing in these beautiful graphics 
<laughs> Seeing is believing because right now we were saying the Goo Goo Dolls. I mean, at least I was. I was saying Goo Goo Dolls is definitely all the way on top, but it's actually Homeland Nova taking that top just because of round differential. We'll have to wait until they play naturally. But both of well, these teams, yeah, it's you know, it's, it's it's an interesting one because Homeland Nova actually. So this is really interesting because they actually beat Sinister Red last week. And since the red is uh, historically that that org always produces a very very good roster, um, they do really really well in multiple tournaments. And Nova beat them seven one, which is again like it's okay. That is a little bit of a thrashing. So again, to come into this kind of you know a little bit of a, a new name and then just be like, oh, we're just going to seven one someone who's very, very historically a good, good roster is always produced. Uh, that was that was very impressive for me. And again, yeah, Goo Goo Dolls, I think a lot of people are really focusing on them and really hyping them up, Mirage Scouts as well. Um, and again, uh, yeah, a lot of these other rosters are people that you will re definitely, certainly recognize. Um, and it, it does almost give you the air that we're being spoiled, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and sure, Whammon Team down at six, they actually won yesterday late last <laughs> night with their rescheduled game so they do have some points that's good for them they've gotten their first win under their belt but for a lot of these other teams they're trying to start going for their second mm. disrupt female they're one of those teams that can really propel themselves all the way up to the top and sh who are down just a little bit below where they're getting cut off right now they're getting you know because they had a pretty hefty loss to goo goo dolls they're going to try to get themselves back up in mid-table because, like we said, it's the beginning of the season. You can make mistakes and still bounce back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, this is the thing. It's, again, of course, it's going to be a little bit of nerves in play day one and in play day two. It's like, okay, let's try going a bit more pedal to the metal. And then if things go horribly wrong, then, you know, you do start to see that teams have a lot of data they can then work with at this point. And that's when you start to see maybe counter strats coming through, things like that by about probably week, I would say week three as much, but probably about week four. Um, yeah, I think week four is a fair. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, yeah, exactly. When you have week four, it's like, okay, yeah, we've played three different teams now. Like now if we mess up, we can really have our trajectory thrown off. It's mm. time to get the coaches involved, get everything else. But even more so is get the players involved. Make sure everybody's fulfilling their roles because We've got rosters, Grace. We do. <laughs> we have so many rosters. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are just going to quickly show you the rosters of our first matchup. So as you can see here, Disrupt Female versus Slaughterhouse Women. Again, a lot of players that you're all going to recognize here. Um, a lot of personal favorites as well, which is quite exciting for me. Um, and again, you know, I, I, I think... Again, I, I feel almost spoiled sometimes with uh, the way that these match matchups work out. But yeah, um, you know, you've got players like Kato, you've got players like Meg Ninji on the side of Sword House Women, players like Lioness, Terra, Jahui, in fact, as well. Um, you know, I've been following these players for a very, very long time. And again, it's all about that growth and seeing their journey as players. It's very exciting to me. Um, and again, this is going to be quite a, quite a fun one, I think, because I think these players have you know played against each other before. So, <laughs> oh yeah, there's already a little bit of rivalry going through. But I mean, you've already talked about so many of the players. Cato was absent last week from the SH Women's game against Goo Goo Dolls. We had Vawasa Wapter, the hardest name for me to say ever, was subbing in. Went, I know of the player. Well. Yes, <laughs> yes, Vawasa Wapter. Vawasa Very Wapter. very difficult to say. Not quite as easy to say as Daddy Satan, which is what you will see Bailey K be flying under, who has some of the most immaculate M762 recoil I've ever seen in my life post-patch. I don't know how she does it, but she does, and it's impressive. So <laughs> look out for that because it's actually, it's just, it's like her with the M762, you know, Bailey K with Zofia AR. It's like Picasso with the brush, absolute masterpiece constantly as well as alexis k who's somebody that i've known for a really long time i actually used to play against her when i was playing collegiate back when she was flying around with the guys over on colorado boulder so watching her grow as a player has always been a joy mm -hmm. and overall i think that this is going to be a game that gets a little bit personal not necessarily in like a full rivalry way but a lot of these players are really close so they're mm -hmm. going to be competitive they're friends and you always want to beat your friends 
You do, you do. I, think, I completely love that. You really do. At the end of the day, yeah, there's banter and stuff like that, but and you can absolutely adore your friends, but you always want to win <laughs> against your friends because it creates more banter in the afterwards. So, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a very enjoyable one. And um, one thing I, I do love as well is like nine times out of ten, yes, perhaps there will be banter, but for the most part, I think vibes will be high regardless of who wins this evening. We're going to probably see like a lot of positivity between the players as well. Um, that again, something something you often see with the North American rosters uh, for for the women's tournaments is is just a lot of very wholesome, feel good vibes. So um, I'm here for it. Yeah, I mean, vibes are always a huge thing, but what's more important to the game that we're trying to get into is what map we're playing. I don't know if you're psychic. I, I you know, this is my first time casting. I don't know if you're a psychic, but I'm a normal person, so I'll probably need to see some map bands to know exactly what we're going for. <laughs> I mean, I can say like, oh yeah, we're actually, um, we're playing bank before it gets added to the pool officially. That's, that's what we're <laughs> playing today. I don't think that the ladies playing in the lobby will be happy because they went through a whole map band process that we don't want to go to waste. Mm, absolutely not. And I mean, to be fair, already getting stuck in a clubhouse ban off the bat I don't think Disruptor are here to play around a little bit. We're going to see a consulate ban, which feels a little bit more safer from Slaughterhouse as well. Um, this this next ban, Oregon as well. Disruptor banning out all of the safe maps, which is, again, very, very interesting. See, Slaughterhouse, they're banning out the ones which perhaps teams have like maybe a little bit more difficulty. I wouldn't say it's particularly hard, but it's definitely ones that favor the more kind of aggressive and structured players disrupt have been like we're taking your safety net away here um and we are indeed going to go to villa which i haven't actually been able to cast this in a very long time so i'm excited for it personally but obviously with villa it is the largest map in the map pool and what that indicates to me is a lot of potential run out spawn peaks a lot of very very heavy roam game um so again that's going to be really interesting to see how these operator bands correlate with that to be honest yeah for the side of sh they struggled last week on coastline against a good team and disrupt gaming they are a good team as well so when you kind of struggle on coastline that means probably your play style isn't suited for chalet either so now as we go to villa which like you said is a big map it's sprawled out you actually have to go through your steps very methodically or else you might find your way stalling into a utility setup or Overall, there's the entire basement of the map, which is just used as a highway for roamers to get from point A to point B without being shot in a hot area. Mm. Lots of fun things can happen on Villa. You can just see so much mobility. And I've always been a huge fan of the map, me being Italian aside, you know. Are you Italian? I am. Oh, I Last didn't name Dapolonio. It's, it's, a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> That's very cool. No, I, I, I think that I, I, you're completely right with Villa. Again, as you say, the basement it is often overlooked, but it can be so so impactful because of that. Um, and again, certainly, I think there are just very. I like all maps. There's very specific choke points, but I do think with Villa, there's a lot of destructibility there. Um, so I am curious to see if we're going to see a little bit of utility and creativity. Uh, to clear these choke points or whether we're going to see kind of more of a standard setup with things, um, especially on those those two main upstairs sites. So most exciting, most exciting. Yeah, I mean, it used to be with Villa, the most intricate thing you would see is an impact trick. And you're like, oh my gosh, they shot the top of the wall and they threw an impact. <laughs> and all of a sudden you see crazy Castle of Rooney Honestly. <laughs> all over the place, making a maze. Top red is held by an Ella shotgun. Or just things. yeah, or just everyone and their nan just getting wiped off the face of the planet by a very very beautifully cooked grenade. And yep. floor yeah. nades, oh, I love floor nades on Villa. I'm always there. here for a good mm. floor nade. Um, so <laughs> yeah, getting stuck in. I mean, realistically, attacking bands probably your classic Thatcher is the first one. There we are, of course. <laughs> No one is surprised by this. Um, but again, this is where the interesting thing is going to be. Will they ban out the Maverick or will they go for something? We're seeing a lot of Yana nowadays, so perhaps... I mean, no way, I'm actually going to see another hard breach uh, kind of support operator taken off, which will be the Ace. Again, I kind of like that because it means that they're going to have to get either up close and personal with the Fermi, which again, we we're talking about that verticality. That's going to be certainly interesting to see if there's going to be a few pre-play C4s or even people roaming below. Um, and otherwise, you have to use maybe a Habana, those X Kairos, but it could be quite tricky to have a very clean cut 
execute over you know a firm might yeah i mean habana you really gotta squeeze in those holes and it's a lot easier for the defenders to just hold a small breach as opposed to the entire wall blowing up and all of the kind of <laughs> resulting angles that go but also the valkyrie ban insanely powerful operator due to the, what you were mentioning earlier, the verticality, mainly the nitro cells. You put a couple of black eye cams in those high traffic areas, all of a sudden you're not having to speculate and really imagine what's happening. All mm. of a sudden you're just throwing a nitro at a, at a yellow ping and then boom, free kill. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, I, I think these, these bands are very, very safe from both sides. And ag again, this is... It's kind of, in, again, more and more it's indicating to me how much Disrupt are not here to play around right now. Like, they fully have their eyes on the prize. Those those map bans were not, I'm not going to say aggressive because that sounds very, very hyped up, but it's almost aggressive. It's being like, we're taking away those safe maps. We're that dragging you to something that perhaps you're a bit more uncomfortable on. Ultimately, yes, Salter House did get the decider um, it, it, themselves in the end, but again, it's taking away those safety nets and Yes, they are starting on defense, but again, if you're, you've got a very aggressive attack coming, regardless of what kind of roam game you're playing, you can get caught out very, very easily if you've got a very solid entry duo who can pinch you and hunt you down. Um, so that's going to be quite interesting. And again, I, I love that Lioness is on the Ayana. We're seeing a lot of Ayana being used um, nowadays, especially again, since these changes to kind of Ash and Zofia and things like that. We are seeing more of that Ayana. Um, and I'm completely here for it because I think the utility is amazing. The gun's amazing. Um, everything's amazing about Ayana, to be honest. I, I rate it so, so hard. Um, endless droning, endless intel, which again, when you're on a map like Villa, that is so, so important. It's so big. You need that information. Yeah, Villa, I mean, Intel it, overall in any map is very, very important. But Villa in particular, there's a lot of cutoff drones that you can do if you really know exactly how you're going to be planning your attack, whether it be from the backside or from the front side, like what we're seeing come out of Disrupt. The first kill goes the way of Bailey, Daddy Satan with the LMGE, no longer wielding the M762 that I hyped her up about. But, you know, garbage felt the same as now Megninj does. Two players for the price of none as this 90 repel is absolutely bisecting the entirety of the site that SH are trying to hold on for. Yeah, and it's, uh, again, it's um, it's a bit of an interesting one because already, like, that was a very, very quick two opening kills, to be honest, as well. Um, and for it to happen so quickly, one after another, it just shows how, again, how aggressive almost Disruptor bringing this, uh, this attack. And it's almost kind of how I predicted it would go, where you're just going to get this very immediate and direct push. Um, and... Yeah, Slaughterhouse, I say that maybe actually their best bet, ironically, is to get a bit aggressive themselves here. I mean, there's slight aggression coming in from an extension. You see Lainey on the Thunderbird hanging on for dear life inside of Closet, but she peeks and Alexis K punishes her. Now it's a 5v2 with just Trippy Mel's and Kato left alive, where every single member of disrupt are just slowly just wrapping around the bomb site there's going to be a pinch coming out but daddy satan didn't see that coming however tara did a quick refrag leaves trippy in the 1v4 doesn't have a whole lot of thing positives going her way they know her location the bomb's going down boom it's a post plant and there's a lot of work that she's going to have to do and unfortunately she's not going to get to get a single kill because you know lioness on the yana that arx it does a lot of damage, especially if you land the headshot like she did. And all of a sudden, after a quick round, a lot of aggression from Disrupt, they take the lead and start off 1-0. And again, it, it's that aggression that is so impressive already. Yes, it's only round one, but again, I just, you know, I, you really get this idea that they're coming in and they're just going to bring the thunder completely. That was such a clean um set up and collapse like absolutely couldn't have gone better for them to be honest i mean yeah i was because of how many people were over on <laughs> inside of avg for the side of sh i thought for a second it was an avg defense but no i was just the horizontal <laughs> extension of the room and i was wondering why the heck isn't 90 why is it 90 wall reinforced why are all these walls soft that makes 90 so powerful and i mean 
Bailey saw that it was powerful because it got her two free kills immediately threw that pressure onto SH where they were grasping for straws and it was like their hands were greased up and they all just slipped through their fingers. 100% and again it's that it's that direct push immediately as soon as we, you know where those roamers are you just go for them go for the jugular take them down take them out then you've got all the freedom all the room all the breathing space to just smell up go for the execute plant down jobs are good and yeah and for the side of sh it doesn't look like they're changing much Attackers if anything the about the their defeated. setup except probably their awareness that 90 repel is scary and they should stay away from it you still have mute jammers you still have a lot of bodies allocated over towards the southern side of the map which is actually where once again disrupt are going to be coming from most likely this clear will be a little bit more difficult because they're not going to get the freebies through the vault door with lmge just spraying 151 bullets down range for the side of disrupt they're gonna have to get their hands dirty just a little bit more we're seeing the drones come through we're seeing garbage feel a little bit of pressure sure there's alibi clones for that phantom pressure but eventually when bodies start flowing in things are going to get a bit more hectic indeed and as the song goes let the bodies hit the floor this is going to be quite an interesting one because it's already about you know a minute gone they're not moving as aggressively as before and well certainly they're not moving now as meg is going to put a little bit of a stop to this roam clear uh fighting back finally and you know stopping them in their tracks they're gonna have to go for the pinch now they're gonna have to hunt her out and they're gonna have to really work as a team there we are alexis is gonna take down garbage but they still have to find meg and there we go jihui is gonna take down meg as well once again they are now cleaning up and pulling this into their favor yeah for the side of sh it's not the worst trade in the world because two well, bodies okay, for a tackle. lot of utility that lioness brings as well as half the round not too shabby however i like the lineup for disrupt gaming because they're bringing so much of that utility it's not the worst thing in the world for lioness to go down because you still have another set of nades you still have burns from both jahui as well as tara and all of the utility that daddy satan is bringing to the table but she's going to take a little bit of damage as kato is getting flashed she's blinder than a bat and laney laney nader laney she goes down to a headshot from Daddy Satan, making this once again a 4v2 situation for Trippy and Caddo to try to clutch up. Ooh, we're gonna see a little bit of prefire, but it is actually shut down once again by Daddy, but Daddy is then shut down by Kato. Jahui on that intel is able to quickly get the refrag, and another round is going in the favor of Disrupt Gaming. Yep, back to back. It was almost a sense of deja vu. Sure, the roam clear was a little bit slower than we saw. SH slightly learned from their mistakes, but once again, Disrupt had a pretty good idea of what SH was bringing to the table, but this extension into Aviator, as well as Laney inside of the closet once again. Typically, what I like to see out of teams is when your first round defense doesn't go the way you want, I'm not a fan of doubling down and going back to the same site. I like teams going through their rotation because mm. then maybe you're not going to see the muscle memory of the attackers just do the same thing but this time a little bit faster and a little bit co more confident and a little bit better which mm -hmm. is once again what we saw out of disrupt sure not necessarily faster but overall key. cleaner everything went through on their trade they didn't even have to get the bomb down because they just exploded into sight all their crossfires were established trade game on the early roam looked good and then they had the man advantage going towards their quote-unquote execute which just turned into a massacre yeah, absolutely, and I completely agree with you. I think, again, if you're going to try and go to the same site, you need to be doing something drastically different as well. Because, um, again, yeah, that muscle memory, I completely agree with you. Um, but, you know, they are finally deciding to change it up a little bit. Um, and, you know, perhaps this will be a little bit safer for them. Again, though, it's interesting to not see the same style of kind of roam presence, unless they're just going to be late to it now. Um, you know, I potentially thought maybe we'd see someone lurking about Astra a little bit, but evidently not. I think Disrupt are going for, the, again, yet again, the old classic of let's push from the other side of the map uh, so we can get that room clear sorted and then go for set up and execute, which, you know, it's working for them really well. Um, yeah, 100% I think that's the right thing to do right now.
Yes, yeah, the path of least resistance. Sure, you have to cover more square footage on the backside, but once again, we're seeing Daddy Satan Bailey pop off on one of those cutoffs. First, it was the 90 repelled. This time, it's that four window. As a beautiful flick coming out of Lioness will end and kind of send Meg Ninja to an early retirement. She'll be relegated to cams duty, which she immediately gets on. Good for you, Meg. I know that she's not the best at getting on cams. I yell at her in unranked stacks, but she did it right here when it matters, and that's good. That's progress. But for the side of Disrupt, their progress is not really being halted by anything. Now they have this entire northern side of the map. They can slowly start pushing once again. And we've seen time and time again, the last two rounds, every time that they start getting momentum, they become incredibly difficult to stop. Yeah, 100%. And again, there's going to be relatively standard utility cell up there on the 90. Uh, corridor as well with Laney kind of holding more of a further back position there but this is what I mean this is the aggression I wanted to see come through from Slaughterhouse that worked perfectly now they just have to finish it off and get the pick onto Alexis or they can just wait and bait it out see if someone will come and pick her up Attackers have located a sometimes being a bit bullshit with it pays off yeah I don't think that they have any idea that Alexis K is down but garbage is still going to get another kill Good for her, she's gonna double up her worth and make sure that the split take can't come to full fruition. That wall inside a study, probably not gonna get opened unless somebody like Jahui rotates around. But she's dead, because like you said, the aggression is starting to come out of SH. They're feeling a lot more confident. They're saying, we're no longer just gonna sit down and take it. We're gonna bring the fight to disrupt, and it's working. Yeah, 100%. You really do love to see it as well. I do love it when people get, again, a little bit bolted with it. Garbage, once again, getting their third for the round. Terra is going to take down Cat over. And Garbage with a fourth on the board now as Terra takes down Trippy. Garbage finally shut down on their little run of Terra there. It's all left down to Lainey on the side of Slaughterhouse. Can she clutch it out? Yes, she can! That is the first round on the board for Slaughterhouse and a much cleaner, much more consistent defense coming through from them. You know, I was ready to sing the high praises of Terra. But no, she couldn't close it out. Unfortunate. Laney gets her first kill. And it's a pretty impactful one. As you gotta say that that round was probably too close for comfort, considering it was essentially a 1v4. But Terra finding her way inside a vault is one of those positions that, as a defender, you don't expect the attackers to necessarily take control of. If that 90 wall is not breached, she just found her way inside of it and was able to cut <laughs> rotations. Garbage couldn't get back in the bomb site because there's somebody in vault holding her swing. Just like as an attacker trying to push in through Attack the aviator the door is not bomb. fun if somebody's in vault. The shoe was on the other foot and it didn't feel <laughs> comfortable at all for Garbage. She gets gunned down. I thought for a second Terra was gonna land the last headshot, but the off angle for Laney ended up fruitful. Now I think I think we might have a game on our hands. Potentially, potentially. I mean, the thing that obviously is concerning me a bit here is that they've gone back to Trophy instead of one of the off-sites, which, okay, fair enough, but again, not really much change here. The thing that I do want to see now is, again, I want to see if they've kind of cottoned on to the fact that, you know, hey, that round went really well because we decided to take the fight to them a little bit. Um, and caught them a little bit off guard, gave them the old razzle-dazzle, uh, gave them the old one too, and, you know, it paid off. Again, Garbage got a lot of kills that last round, and it's going to be interesting to see how they position themselves now and how differently they choose to play, um, you know, these approaches into site. Currently, it looks like they're going from a more direct approach on the side of Disrupt Gaming, though, so this will be quite an interesting one, I reckon. Yeah, we haven't seen a full clear over towards Closet yet. Both times that Laney was in this position, she just got caught swinging. Which is something you don't typically do inside of Closet. You're here to buy as much time as possible. And now that there's those Kona stations as well as a whole lot of utility burn, there's one of my Magnus, there's ADSs, and it's trying to eat up all of these grenades, which, for the side of DG, isn't really doing a whole lot. But the bullets do, when you can just swing in and get crocked just catch Laney in an absolute crossfire. Really unfortunate for her. She was just fighting everybody on Disrupt in unison. And now with a switch up from the side of Disrupt's attack, they're knocking on the site door. See, this is the interesting thing, because that's obviously been left open for an aggressive angle. And again, you d 
assume that the aggression would then be there as well, but no one is peeking that angle. And these attackers have just kind of been allowed to kind of dance through the windows into the bedroom. I mean, they'll dance straight through bathroom as well. They'll just go wherever they so desire. A nitro cell shot out of the air from Kato. That's a really important piece of utility that will remain dormant for the rest of the round. That vertical pressure that we talked about earlier, you can stop a plant in pretty much any position. But that doesn't really matter if the plant isn't going to go down, which as soon as I say that, it starts. The breach is open. Every angle is cut off for Meg. She is fighting all of her demons at the same time. Ooh. And her main demon was Daddy Satan, who lands that last kill right as the buzzer goes off. Now three straight trophy attacks. For Disrupt Gaming means that they're up 3-1. They're starting to potentially run away with this, where for the side of Disrupt, maybe they could have won the ABG, but every time they've gone to Trophy Statuary on their attacks, they've looked pretty much perfect. Do you know what? I'm just going to put this out there just in case, it, you know, Slaughterhouse do VOD review after for next week. And, we, you know, again, this is what we're talking about, about how as time goes on, they're going to be taking more into account how past games went and things like this. If... If D if DG take it today, I really hope Slaughterhouse kind of go back and they kind of be like, hang on a second, yeah, actually we weren't being as aggressive as we as we should have, and perhaps that could have gone differently if we had have been aggressive. Again, yeah, we we definitely saw on round three how how beautifully it works for them. Uh, if they do get a little bit bossy with it, if they do take those fights, they do hold those angles, they do go for those swings. Um, I think maybe maybe it's a confidence thing. I'm, I'm not sure, but again, like, ladies, you have, you certainly have the ability to do that, and you absolutely, um, you know, go for those shots, you can absolutely land them, just have faith in yourselves, like, goodness gracious, goodness gracious, definitely, again, that last round, there were very aggressive setups, where you can have these massive lines of sight to cover an entire room, an entire entry point, from a very far back angle, makes it a little bit more awkward for the attackers to see. Use that to your advantage. Be bullshit with it. Be aggressive. Yeah, so, you know, I just had a beautiful thought in my brain. We can do a, a quick geography lesson. You know, the difference between a peninsula and an island is an island is surrounded on all sides by water. And the peninsula it, typically only has three Britain sides. Joke or something, or... No, it is not going to okay. be a Britain joke. I, I thought about it, but it is not. <laughs> However, I wanted to say that Laney was left on an island when it should have been a peninsula with that long line of sight. However, Daddy Satan doesn't care. She doesn't care about my analysis. She's just running in and getting the triple kill. All of a sudden, you blink your eyes. You blink and you miss it. Everybody's just dead. Daddy Satan, 4K flawless round. The pantry rush works out perfectly for the Disrupt Gaming women. And they've already gotten the 4-2 split with an extra round to try to punch this 5-1 and almost end this game before it even started. I'm gonna have faith. Slaughterhouse can certainly hoisten up their britches right now and pull it back. I, I have faith. I reckon all they need to do get very aggressive on this last defensive round. Okay, go for the go for the spawn peaks. Who cares? It's rat time now. Go for those ratty angles. Go for those spawn peaks, and then as soon as it goes onto attack, go for the old school the go for death stack operator lineup. Like at this point, the rules are going out the window, okay? You need to get aggressive with it. You need to be sweating. You need to be ratty. Um, I want to see that happen so bad. I want to see, I want to see some very disgusting. See some coconut bra level stuff come out. Just, just like you know, I think this really old school like go for like Ying, Blitz, Lion, Dokabi, thinker yep. situations. Like that would be just. I, I, I genuinely think because of how passive Slaughterhouse are playing, if they suddenly turn around and did that on attack, it would be one very amusing and very entertaining, but two, it probably would actually work. Because I think Disrupt would be like, yeah, they're going to do things now on their attack in a very kind of standard step-by-step -step way. They're going to be very um, hesitant with their approach. They're going to be very passive and safe with their pushes. So then the defense will start getting a bit bullshit. And if you suddenly just start throwing all that utility at them and just bringing these like sweaty, disgusting, mm -hmm. ratty lineups. It's like a lineup you can smell through your screen. It like, is, isn't Ugh. it? Yeah, you can lineups you can smell. Um, <laughs> that's the way they need to go with this for their attack, I reckon. 
Yeah, I mean, they could even have started doing it on the defense, but you know, because we're actually in the round, you know, you can't swap after you put down a couple ADSs. You're like, yeah, no, I don't want Jaeger anymore. Just throw him off to the side. Nope, you're stuck with him. And for the side of SH, they're pretty much all stuck inside of sight. There's a slight extension into study, which is where we saw garbage go absolutely crazy. And a little bit of utility allocated over towards the 90 hallway. But other than that, almost everybody's inside of sight. We're seeing a lot more bunker strat come out. But for SH, this is where they saw success. Because they would give the map control for disrupt. And then they would get a little bit comfortable. They'd start doing burning and all that other fun stuff to get a, rid of things like mm. Aruni Gates. And that's when they struck. That's when SH started to just crank up the aggression dial. They cranked it to 11. Garbage went crazy. But now Garbage is dead. So is Laney. It's a trade between her and Alexis K. But for the side of Disrupt, they're still better for wear. They have the man advantage. And they still have half the round to work with. They really do, and again, it's it's a little bit worrisome for me how, um, I'm going to say submissive, but I'm going to say passive still, how passive Slaughterhouse were just now, and I'm really hoping that, you know, these remaining three players, we see them kind of moving into a little bit more of a, of a atypical positioning. Attackers are activating the defuser. Oh, the bomb's down. Oh, or a couple more bodies, bullets are flying all over the place. Trippy lands one down, but she doesn't have a whole lot of HP as she's aggressively swinging. Down goes Lioness as Kato will rip her head clean off, leaving it up to just Terra in the 1v2 post plant. For SH, they're going to have to get aggressive. However, maybe not so, because the Varuni Gate gets burned back up and Kato is covering it away. She's going to swing and drop the diffuser down, but the refrag from Kato will reign true. She has just enough time to get the diffuse, and that's the second round for SH. Putting forward a 4-2 defensive half isn't the worst thing in the world, because after, I mean, they did kind of pick this map with the decider, so maybe they're confident in their attacks, but you still have to say they're at a slight uphill battle. Absolutely, but you know, I think that that, uh, that post plant was really, really solid. Um, and it certainly put Disruption in an awkward position. Yeah, we saw Trippy. They had to go for it. It would have been diffused otherwise, and you're there holding the crossfire. Really lovely positioning there um, by the ladies of Slaughterhouse. So you really do love to see it. Again, yeah, I mean... like, I'm a little bit worried, though. Like, if that was their defense and they were being not as aggressive when perhaps again that would have been the best thing for them to possibly do when it comes to this attack depending on how disrupt wants to play it i'm a little bit worried if disrupt decide to get aggressive and bullshit with it themselves now um i'm wondering how that's gonna that's gonna impact things for slaughterhouse especially on how they choose to approach this map um although we'll see the flores uh actually for villa is quite a nice one that's no, gonna we be see Flores bans mm. because Flores is very, very good. But before we before we talk about this round in particular, I did kind of want to draw a, a quick throwback to what we saw last week from SH. I don't know if you got to necessarily watch the game, but I watched it because I casted it. We saw SH, like you said, with the aggression, the struggling on their attacks. It was really, really evident because they went the coastline and still, I believe it was a 4-2 split for the defense. It was a defender-sided coastline, which is a little, you know, coastline's a little bit yeah. easier to attack than Villa, in my most humble opinion. You know, I could be completely wrong. Hey, who knows? But I think most people would agree that getting map control and really starting to get towards your execute, do all the steps on your checklist on coastline, it's like playing it on easy mode where sometimes maps like Oregon and Villa definitely has the difficulty cranked to at least medium. I'll say it's at least medium. So I'm hoping for the side of SH playing against a slightly more structured roster and disrupt will allow them to properly read into the setups that they're bringing to the table where Goo Goo Dolls are a lot more unpredictable. They just hit you with something crazy that you don't expect where for disrupt, you can pretty much know where everybody's going. There's going to be a slight 90 extension. You got the roaming Alexis K. Mozzie downstairs trying to get a Nitro Cell kill before she'll rotate over towards main. Where, actually, are they using the Echo as hot drones? That would be interesting. But I don't know if that's the case. But we do know the case is that Bailey is on main. She's on red. She's got a shield. She's got a lot of Aruni gates to deal with. 
located a bomb. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. That floor is drone going to try and clear that utility at the top of red, but unfortunately being called out, they're gonna have to send another one. And well, there we are, a C4 is gonna be sent in retaliation first. Meg being taken clean off the board. A bit of a stagnation to the way they're approaching the site at the moment. And again, this aggressive setup from defense, of course, I, I it's, it's always like I have a crystal ball sometimes. You are clairvoyant. <laughs> That's what we'll say. I mean, I know your name's not Claire. You know, it's a word. We'll say that. But <laughs> Bailey's going to pop off once again. The second kill for her as the headshot rains out. Shadow almost loses her life that even though the shield is gone, Daddy Satan definitely is not just who he's going to answer back as the trades go through. Down goes Trippy, up goes Laney. But Alexis K is going to finish from the back, hitting that flank. No Nomad, no worries. And for the side of SH, they stalled really hard in the transitionary phase over towards 90 control. And yes, those Echo drones were hot drones. And Intel gathered essentially a bootleg version of the Valk cams. Was just enough for a yellow ping on a nitro cell that got things rolling for Disrupt's defense. But again, it's this idea, I think, with, with Slaughterhouse right now. I just think maybe it is a little bit of a confidence thing because, again... I've seen these players before. I know what they can do. I know what they're capable of. I know what kind of thunder they can bring to the table. Um, and it's, it's, uh, it just feels like they're a little bit rattled, you know? Maybe, maybe they just need to get the little essentials out, put on some affirmations or something. But it just feels like the, the vibe that it's not passing the vibe check. And again, I, I think maybe they're getting a little bit too. I don't know if it's like, you know, maybe a staticness where they've, they've already predetermined their plan for the map um, and it's making them a bit more rigid in how they're reacting to whatever the defense is doing uh, as a result where they're kind of thinking like, okay, what can we change here quickly? Um, how can we change our approach? Cause they, I don't know, again, you've got a lot of utility here, which yes, it's going to help you to clear off utility, but you know, that intel on the board with the Ayana and the Jackal, you can make some aggressive pushes. You can get garbage swinging every angle under the sun if you want to. Yeah, I think what it came down to is that setup is really intricate. And even in Challenger mm. League, we've seen teams like Orglis who were undefeated on Villa and nobody dared challenge them, bring that setup. You know, the Jaeger or Wamai on Red Stairs is just mm. such a power position that is so hard to clear out unless all of your team is just really on it utility-wise. That shield, it made things more difficult. You know, there was two Rooney Gates to burn. There was ADS's magnets, people swinging on crossfires, and yellow pings galore for the flank. It really felt like SH kind of got put inside a barrel. And for Disrupt, you know, they were shooting fish in a barrel. It was really easy for them as the backside push really didn't work. So SH are going to be going for the front side. First off, it's not starting off too well. Jahui takes the head right off the Kato. Down goes your hard breach, but Dan Daddy Satan, Bailey, she's gonna pop off and get a couple of trades back and forth. Now it's a 2v1 situation because Megninj and Trippy exploded into the site. Alexa, she has to come back, and Megninj, that flank drone, it pings out the location. The comms were clean, the flank watch was awesome, and that shot was even better. The attack. Going front side definitely looked a lot better for SH because they just flicked the switch, they cranked up that aggression, and it worked out. Absolutely, and I think that is again what they need to start doing. Um, We've seen them be successful in all three rounds that they've won by being aggressive, and then they go. But back. this is, but this is why it's frustrating. Like this is why exactly. it's this is why it's frustrating because it's like, come on, ladies, you know, you absolutely, you you more than fly. You saw, you saw when you get aggressive with it, when you catch them a little bit off guard. Again, at this point, I think if you're being so passive, teams get the team you're against. They almost get into this kind of vibe where they're like, oh, you know they they're going a bit back to basics here we can kind of predict a lot easy Ill, easier what they're going to do um and you know the kind of approaches oh okay they're pushing from here so they have to get control of here 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 they're going to use this utility uh we can catch them off guard by doing this if you get aggressive with it you're suddenly in an angle or a position where you maybe you're not meant to be um absolute spanner in the works absolute spanner um so want to see more of that to be honest yeah i mean 
the proof is in the pudding. We've seen them when they start swinging, when they're the ones bringing the fight to be disrupted. They're winning! And then they just they just go back on their word. They're like, oh no, that's, it's too easy if we just swing everything. We want to make it harder for ourselves. And it hasn't worked. But please, maybe, maybe they're learning. Because we see the front side spawns once again. The master bathroom, flood onto bricks, flood everything strat. Worked really well. So they're going to be trying to do it once again. Alexis K is probably going to be a little bit more on guard down below with a nitro cell. You can really stack up people inside of closet as long as they're on that. 50% of it that is destructible from below, which is currently what Alexis K is sitting down beneath. There's not a whole lot of intel on the side of DG, so Alexis K is going to be doing it the old-fashioned way with a big old set of gold mirrors trying to have those audio cues guide her nitro cell. Or maybe just pure game sense, but unlike the first round of defense, it's not going to be just a yellow ping from an echo cam. No, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, we're going to see a bit of a cheeky C4 come through there as well. I mean, one thing I want to point out is, like, that Daddy's currently on a 1.5k DR, so... <laughs> That is pretty significant, again, especially considering the fact that they are pulling this so very nearly to match point. Um, it, it has been a very strong performance from the side of Disrupt, Ooh. and that was very close. Meg, very, very lucky to be alive there, narrowly missing the C4, but here we go. Here's some nice utility to try and clear those uh, charted back claw away from the wall, and potentially we're going to see a little bit of a setup, maybe a few more kills going down first, but... Well, Laniator is going to start this off by getting the pick onto Johui, so following that is going to be Garbage, and then Garbage is immediately taken down by Alexis. This is where it gets aggressive yet again, and it gets a bit better. Here we go, a 3k off the bat because you get aggressive, you push into sites. All left down to Daddy now in a 1v2. Go for the plant, Kato. Oh my goodness gracious. I mean, let's not gloss over the fact that, that Meg tk two people in that round. A little bit of orange on orange action is only going to favor the blue team, which all of a sudden is a winnable situation for Daddy Satan. The red pings are coming out. The idea of the positions of both of these attackers are known in the brain of the Jaeger. She's going to be swinging across, slowly creeping on her flank, as SH doesn't know exactly where she is. Megnage is only a hair breath away from death, which is exactly what she finds, but Kato is there for the refrag. <laughs> Beautiful cross shot from across the way will win another round for sh that i'm gonna say what i said in round three was a little bit too close for comfort but you know they all count the same and the score is slowly crawling back to nearly even yeah absolutely it's it's really again it's really nice to see that actually yeah maybe they are clocking onto the fact that hang on if we do get a bit bullshit with it this pays off we just saw laney kind of just it was almost like she was had a moment of oh, i've had enough of this time to kill some yep, people it was so fine i'll do it myself i'm on <laughs> yeah. flex but i'm gonna entry yeah uh sounds you could just hear in your brain as someone so, so soon as the someone says the words fine i'll do it myself yeah absolutely love to see it um Again, it completely, it completely took them off guard because at that point you've been so, so, so not slow, but patient, I'd say. Patient and cautious with it. That yes, the defense, they're being like, oh, they're taking this slow, they're using their utility, slow and steady winter race, and suddenly out of nowhere, Laney is just appearing. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, this would have been a 4v1 if Negnin knew how to, you know, not shoot her own teammates, which may sound harsh, but once again, my experience from her in the unranked ranked or casual stacks is definitely she likes to shoot her teammates. She wanted to give Daddy Satan a false sense of security that maybe, just maybe, she could win it before Kato completely snuffed out any hope that she had. But hey, now the third time I'm saying it, you know, all rounds count the same. It was too close for comfort, but whatever, it's all good. But can SH now, the biggest question I have is, can SH break down the red extension that we saw them really struggle and stall out against on their horizontal push by going for a more front side heavy take? Yeah, and I think indeed maybe now Disrupt are being like, hang on a second, we nearly pulled it to match point and now Slaughterhouse are one round behind us. Maybe it's time for us to get a little bit more passive with it. 
maybe we should go a bit more back to basics and standard. Just hold these angles, maybe we're not going to be as bolshy and well. Being a bolshy lane need to get again kind of just waltzing in uh, and is immediately kind of downed. I don't, didn't quite catch where that was from but I'm assuming it was actually um, AV door. I mean, Lainey is in a recoverable position, but how long is she recoverable for, especially with Electus K is on the prowl for the flank? Down goes Meg Ninja. She's not alive to TK her teammates anymore, but Trippy is alive to get a kill on Jahui. Lioness swings out, takes down Garbage. The manic count advantage Ooh. swings into the favor of Disrupt Gaming's defense as Lioness is going to go for another. All of a sudden, it was looking good for the side of SH, but now it's looking just a little bit better. But once again, it just goes back and forth, back and forth. Cato, she's in a 1v3. Make that a 1v2 as she cuts Alexis, Hay Alexis K's head right off, and it's now going to be going for the rotate. The positives for Cato right now is that it's only a 1v2. It's not the worst position in the world. She has the diffuser in her back pocket and a full minute to work with. But now as that barbed wire gets broken, I think SDG has a subtle idea of where she's coming from. A flashbang rings out <laughs> saying that, yes, I'm coming from Skull. And the skull is exactly what Cato is going to receive. A bullet through. Daddy Satan Bailey going for another kill. She's going absolutely crazy today. And disrupt. They're on match point. Yes, indeed. And again, I'm going to be very curious to see where Disrupt decide to take this now. Dining room kitchens, of course. I think, I think we could have all predicted that. Um, I mean, it's... Again, I really hope that the pressure doesn't get slaughterhouse now. I hope they can drag it out a little bit more. Um, a little bit more, a little bit extra. Again, we we have seen them start to um, work that aggression in their favor. I will say perhaps that last round, it wasn't as well-timed. Um, but still, still brilliant nonetheless. And again, a lot of Intel utility still. I really want to see them maybe use that a little bit more and then a little bit more clearly and then see that aggression come from that. Yeah, we saw the only time that we've seen this bomb site played was SH's defense of it where Disrupt rushed. So maybe SH will rush? Maybe? Because right now... For disrupt their lineup is very nitro cell dependent you've got the pulse as well as the mutant mozzie all bringing up a little brick of explosive that they're going to try to throw on the ceiling if sh goes for a traditional top down take but with the absence of sledge on the attacking lineup i don't quite know if that's in the cards for sh i don't think that's their game plan sure maybe trippy could be using the shotgun to make vertical but typically you want to bring a sledgehammer or maybe even the buck skeleton key but both of those soft creatures once again are absent which to me is like yes we're probably going to go direct and now with the lineup and the spawn points already shaping up probably going to be saying yeah let's go direct let's push pantry jahui she sniffs it out with that cardiac sensor she knows that nobody's really going upstairs they're probably going to start hitting the bomb site and now guns up come from the disrupt gaming defenders as they're going to be prepping Absolutely. And again, I, I love the fact that, you know, often when you do see that pulse scan, especially on this side, it's more aimed at the fact that they're going to try and use it for a few TGC4 Attack kills and on, on the third. But the fact that you can get so up close and personal and Attack really, really understand Attack where this approach is coming from. Are they going to go, you know, directly towards laundry? Um, are they going to actually bother going upstairs? I mean, currently it looks like they're not actually considering getting too much of the upstairs control, which is quite interesting. But... Um, again, they have been trying to go a little bit more off charter, I'd say, the last few rounds to try and catch them off guard, which I do like. Laney, once again, getting a bit aggressive, being the one to swing out. Going to send in some of that drone utility as well to perhaps clear something. A nade coming out of Megninch will doom Lioness as after this kind of delayed rush came through. It's a 3v3. The Roamers for Disrupt are starting to come back home, Daddy Satan. She's coming back towards the bomb site, but the Diffuser is outside. Laney, she's down on brown. There's a bulletproof seeing her location as now its destruction will be indicative of... Yes, there's somebody pushing towards Clock, but you can know all you want where she is. She's still going to put you home in a body bag. However, Yahui, her location was definitely not known. She gets the DBNO, but she's not able to finish the kill. Hera, 
she's running straight into vine she's gonna finish with the melee as megnin just also down but garbage is gonna bring her back as the dynamic duo megnin and garbage trying to hold this off and survive longer a cooked nade through the rotate hole will get eaten by the ads as tara's gonna have to swing and get aggressive the bomb is down and both of these players have retreated inside of laundry and outside a nitro cell can be thrown over but it's gonna get caught off of half broken debris really unfortunate for Terra Ooh. what's even more fortunate is the fact that Megnin swung a beautiful shot will make this a 1v1 she can tap away on the diffuser garbage is close she has an LMG oh. but the SMG 11 is more suited a triple kill a 1v3 for Terra for match point she tips her hat and says GG to SAG Sports and GG Terra what a really beautiful clutch out to finish that map on again I think Walter House said so, so well towards the end there, but ultimately there can only be one win winner and Disrupt played that. To be fair, Disrupt certainly played that a lot, a lot stronger, I'd say. Again, I, I am curious to see how Slaughter House themselves feel about that map. Do they feel that, yeah, actually, yeah, perhaps I was being a little bit shy with it? Um, but certainly, certainly a nice performance, especially towards the end from both teams there. Um, and again, that's, that's only map number one of this evening this is very exciting we've still, we've still got we've still got a whole another one exactly it feels like every time i cast there's some crazy clutch for match point but sad girl tara sec on twitter follow her she's crazy she did very well beautiful <laughs> stuff and overall from disrupt they played a more complete game than sh they were able to adjust just that little bit more really understanding when to get aggressive when mm -hmm. to play passive and they just got more rounds especially on the attack which is most of the time what villa comes down to is can you get that three three split can you get that kind of at least two rounds but for you know for dg they got they got four on their attacks and they really set themselves up to really go for the throat Absolutely. And, you know, next week, again, it's going to be very interesting to see based on what's happened this evening and how, you know, again, Payday 1 went. Um, I'm, I'm really curious and excited to see how Slaughterhouse are going to change things up next week. Um, on the side of Disrupt, I mean, they're on an absolute roll right now. So they're yeah, going to be... Yeah, 2-0, they're chilling. Yeah, they're getting the Uber out and they're going, okay, ladies, what are we eating tonight? Because we are on fire. Um, I think, think they're doing a really good job so far. Um, certainly, as I say, they just look so consistent. They were being just so perfectly timed with everything. Um, utility on point. Yeah, very, very well played this evening. Yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot of negatives that we can say about DG. And for SH, they might just be starting to think about hitting that big red button that signifies panic. Because sure, it is early on in the season and they did have two of their most difficult games starting off, you know, start with Goo Goo Dolls, then go directly into Disrupt. <laughs> Not a fun start, no. which we've seen teams fall early on because they've had difficult schedules, then manage to claw their way back. It's definitely not time to fully hit the panic button. It's kind of a let's take a breath and let's reevaluate kind of button because their season is far from over and uh. still got what, like five or six more play days to go through before playoffs. They can they can definitely bounce back. Oh, 100%. I, I feel confident in it again. You know, a lot of players there, which I recognize, players like Kato, and I think that that's the point where you kind of get to the drawing board and you're like, right, what do we need to do here? And um, how can we do, change things up and basically play into what's going to benefit us going forward um, in, in the rest of this tournament? So, yeah, much, much to think about, much to think about for the side of Slaughterhouse. But on the side of Disrupt, again, the only thing they're probably thinking about right now is just celebrating. Yeah, I mean, Tara celebrated her birthday just a couple of days ago. Now she's celebrating oh, a victory with happy a birthday. clutch. So, you know, happy birthday to Tara. And... Everybody on Disrupt just once again they played well. They're two and zero. You can't really complain about mm. anything with that. They're looking like they're a contender to maybe take down Goo Goo Dolls and really try to go all the way. Yeah, one hundred percent. And you know, speaking of all the way, this evening we are going all the way to four or is it five games? Actually, I think it's only four. We got, games we got this four. Evening. We got four. We got today. four games for you this evening. Um, we are going to get to our second matchup shortly, but we are just going to take a quick break. So don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 